Welcome to the Glenhurst Art Teach video series. In this episode, we explore the art of needlepoint with fourth generation needlepoint artist, Monica Bradshaw. Okay, so Monica, you are a needlepoint artist and you brought all this beautiful stuff uh, to talk about. I'd love to start in with like how you got into this. I know this is a family story for you. So tell me a little bit about that. So yes, I got into it from my mom and my mom got into it from my grandmother. I love to think about how my grandmother was a prolific needle pointer in her home. So she taught my mom and then my mom taught my sister and I, and that's how we have all kind of taken to the craft. It's such a wonderful piece of art to pass down and to have so much meaning. And even like we talk about stockings, like this is one your grandma made. Yes, it is. Yeah, she, this was uh, the first great grandchild stocking that she did, but she's done stockings for all of my cousins and aunts and uncles, like 20 plus of us. So yeah. So let's talk about how difficult this is to do. Like something like this, if you were working on a project, how long would, would something like this take? So for me, this takes a year. So this is, um, yeah, buying a canvas that are, is pre-painted. So that's important to distinguish about needlepoint. Um, and then it's choosing your colors and threads. And if you can see, there's lots of different types of threads often used in a, in a project. And then execution. So it, it's not a sit down and do all at once. It's kind of a, a come to over a period of time. And so you made these two. Right, these are yours. So actually my mom did this one when I was a baby. And then my grandma said, well, hang on, I'm gonna do these, these bigger ones for all the kids. So I actually had, this is the one that my grandma ended up doing. And I did this for my husband after we got married. Oh, wonderful, that's so awesome. Okay, so now I have a question about needlepoint that I think comes up a lot, okay. which is what is the difference between needlepoint and cross stitch? Because I think you hear those two things almost interchangeably, but they're a little bit different. They're a little bit different. So my sister, so I brought um, an example of cross stitch that my sister does. Um, but almost quite simply, the distinction would be that needlepoint is on a painted canvas painted by an artist right. and cross stitch typically follows a pattern, a chart. Um, so it's a little more freehand. Now, are you passing this down to your children also? Yeah, so my daughter is actually working on a little horse right now um, that she's also been working on for many months. <laughs> so it just is one of those things that when the mood strikes, you pick up and stitch and then and then put it away. And this, this must be super therapeutic for you. Like I quilt and I know that's therapeutic for me, but like this, you know, taking a year to just kind of really focus in on one thing, is, is that part of the pleasure of it? That's really it. I mean, it's a way to unwind. It's a way to mentally relax. Um, it's a little bit of yoga for the mind. But I think especially um, in the times that we've been living in, it's a way to um, keep your hands busy, <laughs> create, and totally focus on something else that, that allows you to shut out the, the noise that is maybe happening around you. And when I am sitting down to needlepoint, um, I, I do sort of think about my family. It's a way um, for me to feel connected to my mom and my sister who, who both live, we all three of us live in different cities. And we all have a project on the go all the time. And so, you can share with each other where your projects are. And exactly. So tell me just like a, a little bit more about the work that you do. So for example, this is a pillow for the tooth fairy made for your daughter. I know you talked about yeah. doing a little bit more modern work than maybe the work your grandmother did for stockings and, and artwork. Yeah. So I like to do a little more like contemporary needlepoint, let's say. Yeah. So fun things, again, for the home and for the family. And a tooth fairy pillow. I've done bags, keychains. So this is a canvas that I bought and, and I stitched and it's going to actually end up being a wine bottle coaster for our cottage. You know, it strikes me a little bit that needlepoint is art that can be usable, right? So you're making pillows, you're making something for the tooth for the tooth fairy, you're making stockings. That's that's got to be such a different experience to have an art form, but also have it be functional, like in your home later when you're finished. Yeah. And I think that also makes it approachable and exciting for someone who's maybe new to the craft to say, oh, I definitely want to do that. I want to make a keychain or a pillow um, or a simple ornament for the tree. It's such an achievable uh, project and, and anyone can do it. 
So you talked a little bit about creating your own art to Needlepoint too. Can you tell me a little bit about that? How do you decide what is the right thing to paint on a canvas? Sure. So um, often and more recently than not, I have felt that I want uh, to have some projects that, that are more mine and that I haven't maybe found in the marketplace. And, and typically I'm thinking about an end product. So um, like a butterfly sort of emerged out of uh, last spring it's sort of hopeful and colorful and was something sort of fun that I was going to um, turn into like a little door knocker for, for one of my daughters. Um, otherwise, it's an ornament, you know, a little wreath with an initial, something for our tree. So usually I'm painting, thinking about how that's going to be as a finished product. So if someone is interested in Needlepoint, how would you suggest they get started? How, what's the way to try it? So typically you would want to find um, your local needlepoint shop and they are a tremendous resource for workshops so that you can learn, kits so that you can get started and any supplies or resources that you need on your journey of becoming a needlepointer. There's also some great online resources. So I would really suggest um, getting on the internet and, and finding a project or a designer that, that speaks to you. So what is important to have? Uh, what are kind of the key tools that you need to, to try Needlepoint? So really Needlepoint is, I mean, quite simply a canvas with a design and needle and some threads. It's, it's you know, threading the needle in and out of the canvas. It's, a, it's the same stitch over and over. Anybody can do it. Okay, so for example, on a project like this, you've probably got six or five or six or seven colors in here. When you're going across the grid, you must have to change colors all the time. Definitely. And there are a couple ways you can approach a project. In this case, I would just pick the first color that I want to stitch with. And, and probably here, let's say I do purple. Well, I would do stitch all the purple. Right. Then I would change my needle and, and thread blue. And then I would stitch all the blue. But when you're switching threads, you're going to do what's called burying the thread. So you're going to have a little tail and you're going to kind of stitch behind it to bury your thread. And then you start your new color. So I think there might be an assumption from years past that Needlepoint is kind of, you know, your grandma's art. But Needlepoint, I keep seeing it everywhere. So it must be getting more popular with younger people. I certainly think so. And I've had um, more interest recently than I ever probably have before. I think there's a real resurgence of not only Needlepoint, but other sort of, of, of traditional crafts. Um, and people wanting to make that more modern and contemporary. And I, I think if history has taught us anything, it's that in some of the most beautiful artwork comes from some of the darkest times and, and has us reaching back to some of those traditions, and in my case, family traditions, um, to create something with our hands and to be more creative and create something for today and for tomorrow. Well, I think especially right now in a very digital world, everyone's kind of craving something tactile, to do something with their hands that's right. not scrolling through social media, right? So you get the chance to actually do something different, have kind of a visceral experience, and then have something to show for it at the end. That's so true. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, getting, getting, off the on, getting off the online world and into your, back into your own home and creating is such a great way to spend your time. We have all the supplies. Would you show me how to do this? I would love to. Let's give it a try. So I'm going to show you how to do the tent stitch today, and that is the most common stitch in Needlepoint. Of course, there are lots of ways to be creative with stitches, but those are kind of next steps for um, more intermediate stitchers, I would say. Okay. Uh, the tent stitch is a really simple um, in the top right, down the bottom left stitch. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use this enlarged plastic canvas with a thick yarn and a big needle. Of course, this is not what you're using for needlepoint, but here we go. So we're going to go up the top right and slowly pull your thread out down the bottom left. Super simple stitch. And you can just do that over and over again. Okay, let's try. So I'm going to go up the top right. Perfect. Slow. And then we'll go back down in the bottom left. Perfect. So something that you want to be mindful of is the tension of your thread. 
in this scenario, we're using a thicker thread, but often we get creative with different types of threads that can get knotted. Right. So having just that perfect touch of tension is really important. And that's something that you learn with more practice of different types of threads and, and stitching. Well, and I'm getting the sense you have to be very patient with yourself. Yes. Go slowly. Yes, especially when you're first starting out. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be, you'll be zipping right along. Oops. Let's pull that needle out because we want to go into the top oh, right hand hole and then diagonally okay, so down. Go in one. There we go. There we are. So it's just a simple grid, always stitching on the diagonal. There we go. Perfect. So Avery, when you go to pick up your first project, you will actually be stitching on an 18 or 13 mesh canvas. That's what it's called. Okay. Much finer holes and a different size needle and threads more appropriate to that size canvas. And again, you'll just be going slow and make sure you've got good lighting and you're off to the races. You must have to really pay attention to which, which uh, stitch you're doing at all times. Yes, you do. And, and I would say that that's part of the process of, you know, tuning out the outside world, that meditative feeling. Doesn't it feel like yoga for the mind? It does really, I wanna keep doing it. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, Monica, for walking us through the process of needlepoint. You're welcome. I really enjoyed teaching you all about it. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the subscribe button below. Give us a like or visit our channel for more videos in the Glenhurst Art Teach series. You can also stay up to date with everything Glenhurst at glenhurst.ca.